Hi, this is Gary Boss with Audio Technica here explaining microphones with Pro Audio Land. Now, in this segment, what we're going to talk about is the difference between large diaphragm condensers, which I have here, and small diaphragm condensers, which you've seen a lot of times they're called pencil condensers because of the shape. They're just really 21 millimeter tubes with a with a little mesh end on them. Um, really, it's kind of interesting because we kind of explored the difference between dynamics and condensers before, and one of the things we found out is condenser microphones tend to um, handle transients better and have more air and better frequency response and things of this nature. But now we come down to the difference, which is a little more subtle, the difference between small diaphragm condensers and more of a large diaphragm, which is more like a studio microphone you would expect to see. So really what it comes down to is the mass and the size of the diaphragm. The large diaphragm condensers have much more mass to their diaphragm, so even though they're condensers and quick, they're not as fast as the small diaphragm. And what does that do sonically? Well, a lot of people say that the large diaphragm condensers tend to sound a little bit more warm or a little bit more what do we say, natural, okay? And a lot of people may say that small diaphragm condensers are faster and a little brighter and maybe a little bit more exaggerated. Well, why would this be important? Well, say you have something like a ride cymbal. You really want to get the articulation of the stick hits. You know, it's very, very important. Well, a small diaphragm condenser is going to be much, uh, much better at that than a large diaphragm. You're going to get a lot more articulation. Maybe you want to get the string noise and the finger on, on the string on an acoustic guitar. That's really good for a small diaphragm. Maybe you want to put this on a vocal or a voice. Well, typically those small diaphragm condensers are going to be a little too strident, a little too high or bright. Um, that's where this large diaphragm kind of warms and kind of smooths out that voice. Now, a couple interesting things. First of all, drum overheads. Well, you're miking cymbals. What do you want to do? Do you want to put a large diaphragm or a small diaphragm? Well, kind of popular thought a long time ago, people would use a lot of small diaphragms on overheads because uh, after all, you know, you are picking up the cymbals. But what, what we found is that, you know, you pick up the whole drum kit. So you're getting toms and kick and snare as well as cymbals. So people have started to move towards larger diaphragms on, on overheads. And that because they find that they're mixing a lot of the kit in with the cymbals and the small diaphragms are making the kit sound a little too bright. But on the other hand, this is completely personal preference. Um, and what people will do now is they'll put the large diaphragms on overheads and they'll spot mic with the pencil condensers, maybe under the ride. Um, the other application that where both work really well is say an acoustic guitar. You may take a pencil condenser, put it at the 12th fret, pointed kind of back towards the sound hole, and that's gonna get to all those finger noises. But then you wanna take a large diaphragm and put it back here on the body of the guitar, and that's gonna get the warmth and the smooth and the rich character of the guitar. So just a couple differences between small and di uh, large diaphragm condensers. Hope this helped and thanks for watching.